just can't help but to toss this one in your lap. So I'm looking at this on Breitbart. Now, it was said on MSNBC, and it's been picked up all over, but I I, I saw the story on Breitbart. The title, and this is just a couple days ago, the title is, actually it was, yeah, yesterday, day before yesterday. Here's the title. Joe Scarborough on border security, quote, what would Jesus do? <laughs> and then, and, and I'm going to let you answer it. This is a softball. You're going to hit it out of the park. But then he goes on. He says, um, little children continue to die in the custody of the U.S. government, Scarborough Boy. remarked. Well, first of all, little children died when Obama was in office for eight years on the border and in our custody. That's a fact. And then he goes on to say, and remember, friends, that's our government. Yes, remember, that was your government under Obama for eight years. Anyway, he says, that's your government and my government that's allowing little children to die while they're incarcerated. Um, That gives a picture of behind bars and a prison and a jail. We don't incarcerate little children. Little children are not dying in America because of Americans at the border. But anyway, you can talk about all that you want, but I specifically want you to answer this question about what would Jesus do? And I know you've got some answers, and I've got some insight, and so let's take a few moments and do that. Then I want to get to this nine things to normalize, which is going to be extremely right. controversial. <laughs> yeah, no, we posted that story, that Scarborough story, to Facebook, and somebody, one of our brilliant followers on Facebook uh, posted a comment underneath uh this person said now i don't have it in front of me but this person i'm paraphrasing now said uh, listen uh uh heaven has very strict immigration rules uh, there are gates there are there are walls and uh, very strict immigration rules uh it's, jesus said it's easier for a camel to pass through the eye of a needle than it is for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of, of god i mean jesus even lays out the fact that listen heaven is not easy yeah. Uh, in fact, it is only through me That's that right. you get in. Okay. Right. There, there's no, there's, yeah. there isn't a ladder tall enough, Carl, to to reach the wall that is encompassing heaven. Yeah. But, but, hell has no such restriction. <laughs> Thank Everybody you. No walls. Into hell. <laughs> the, the, uh, there's no immigration rules. Everybody wants to get into hell. Just come on in. Yes. And then the person says, "Let that sink in." Yes. Let that sink in. Yeah. And I'm also reminded, Carl, of when Jesus clears out the demons from this person who was uh, who was possessed by a, a, a legion, a, a legion of demons, right? And then he says to this person, uh, "Okay, now you're free. Just go back to where you came from. Don't come with me." Jesus says. He did oftentimes say, "Come with me, follow me." But in this case, I find it interesting. He says, "Go back to your home." But you, you are you are free now. Go back to your home, and so then Jesus says, "I will have need of you someday." Right? Uh-huh. I'm paraphrasing now. Uh-huh. And then Jesus needs a ride into into Jerusalem, and he sends two of his apostles up to this person, and he says, "Go go take this person's donkey. You'll find a donkey that's never been ridden, the colt of an ass." The King James says, uh, "You'll find one that's never been ridden." And they say, well, what if the owner protests? You know, I'm paraphrasing. I know it doesn't say that word for word. But what if the owner protests? And then Jesus says, tell him the Lord has need of it. The Lord has need of it. Many people believe it is that demoniac. It is that person who went home. His life got normal. He was prosperous. He probably had a whole bunch of cement mixer trucks in his driveway there. He, he started up a cement mixing company, and, and he, uh, you know, he— uh, he had a prosperous cement mixing company because he's been cleared out of all of his demonic influences, right? So he's got all this going on in his life, and uh, and the, the uh, you know the uh, the apostles go up to his front door, and uh, you know they kind of sneaking into his garage there, and they take one of his cement mixers, and uh, and the uh, you know the guy comes out and says, "What do you guys think you're doing?" And the and the apostles say, uh, "The Lord has need of it." And he says, "Okay, it's all yours. Just do whatever you want with it." Yeah. Now I'm using that as a meta- I'm using that as a metaphor for the donkey, of course. But um, but you know that is also a metaphor for what's happening on the border. The Lord Jesus. What would Jesus do? Jesus would clear out whatever's happening in their home countries, in their hometowns, and say, "You guys have to do what. <laughs> follow me back to your hometowns." Make the best of what you have going on there. Stop trying to overrun and breach this country. They've yeah. got enough problems of their own. Yeah, thank you. Hey, listen, so, you know, I know the PNN network is huge. I think there's like 16 Facebook pages and a couple of syndicated blogs and websites. Of course, this show is connected to it, on and on and on. But I just went to freedomfriday.com, excuse me, freedomfriday.carlgallops on Facebook. And so 
un- underneath that article, uh, Carol Murray, uh, one of our followers and listeners, she wrote, well, Jesus would build that wall. And then she goes on, she says, nation, she says, national borders are mentioned all over the Bible and it's not unusual for God himself to state the borders, what they are, where they are, where the people are to live and the borders. And then here's one, Matt Gibson. He says, walls, question mark, just saying. And then he quotes Revelation 21 verses 10 through 15. I won't read it all, but here's verse 15. And he who talked with me had a golden reed to measure the city and its gates and its walls. Right. <laughs> and then sure. here's one from... Yeah, let that sink in. Right? Yeah, really, let that sink in. And here's one from Noni and Bruce Sandifer Sr. It says, these liberals crack me up. They hate God and they hate Christians unless it's politically expedient. Now let that sink in. Thank you, right. Mr. and Ms. Right. Sandifer. And right. on and on they go. And that's just on this page and there's many more. But uh, yeah, but, but the thing is, you know, when Joe Scarborough says... Um, these little children, what would Jesus it's do? the children. Yeah, what would right. Jesus do? Well, here's the balance to it. And I know you're going to agree with me here, but here's the balance. Of course. Now, now watch, folks. Listen to this. The balance is God sets borders. He establishes the nations. Heaven has walls. It has gates. It has borders. It has walls. It has a strict, you don't get a passport to heaven unless you come through Jesus Christ. Okay? So let's just cut out the silliness about what would Jesus do. But now he makes it about children. Well, first of all, children were dying under Obama's regime, but it had nothing to do with Obama or our border security or our military. The same thing under Trump. It's the parents that are bringing these kids in that are sick, or they got sick on the way, or they got abused on the way, or horrible things happened to them. They come in illegally, and here they are. They're in our hands. So what do we do? We put them in jail like Joe Scarborough. They're incarcerated? No. We life flight them to hospitals, and my money, Mike, pays for it, and I'm glad to pay for it. And we give them medical care, and my money pays for it, and I'm glad to. The United States of America does what very few nations of the world, we do for their children what most of them would never do for our children. And yes, it's sad, but sometimes some of them die because they're in critical condition when they finally come to us. Joe Scarborough ought to be ashamed of himself, even mentioning the name sure. of Jesus. And then this fake news, yeah. they wonder why we call MSNBC fake news, this fake news that little children are being incarcerated and they're dying. And he goes on to say, because of Trump's policy. That's another lie. So anyway, I'm finished with that. You finish it up like you want. We'll take a break in a minute, and then let's talk about these nine uh, things that we need to normalize. Yeah, no, I think Jesus would say to bloom where you're planted. Follow me back to your home countries, and I will help you clean up the mess that exists in your home countries. Well, that's good. But this whole idea of stealing, you know, uh, Paul says, "Are, are you one that steals? Steal no more. And if you're going to steal your way back, your way into a country illegally, you know, since when did the word illegal stop stop meaning anything? Right. I mean, uh, are, are you going to steal citizenship from a country? Are you going to steal your way into a country and rob things from them without uh, without uh, going through the normal processes? And uh, guess what? You know, in 2020, uh, there is a there is a uprising within the Hispanic community who came in legally, who now are we are approaching 40% approval uh, on Trump's side because they are sick to death of these people trying to steal their way into a country illegally when these people went through the normal channels in right. order to come in legally right. and be profitable and contributing members of society. Right. And you know what? Canada would never put up with this. No, I, I know, no, no other country would. Listen, I hope that Donald no. Trump keeps the government shut down, and even that is a misnomer. The government's not shut down. I know no. there are people screaming now, so, well, I'm not getting my paycheck. I get it, but you will get your money. Hang in there. The government's not shut down, right. but I hope he'll keep it no. shut down to make these Democrats, to, to smoke them out so everybody can see who they are until he gets the money to put up the wall and keep the promise he made. It's as simple as that. Mike, listen, let's take a couple minute time out because I want to come back and hit okay. this nine things to normalize. I want you to have plenty of time to unpackage that, okay? Okay. All right, folks, we'll be right back. Mike Shoesmith in the house. See, this is why you listen to Freedom Friday with Carl Gallagher. For thousands of years, mankind has debated how creation began. Ancient texts tell us the story 
But today, the real message behind the pivotal account of the Garden of Eden has been obfuscated and lost. That is, until now. World-renowned author Carl Gallops digs up the hidden truths from the book of Genesis to finally give back the knowledge that was lost to the world. Find out what really happened in the Garden of Eden, what Jesus taught about Eden on the cross, and how the conflict between Jesus and the gods of antiquity is about to erupt on planet Earth, fulfilling biblical prophecy. In the new book, Gods of Ground Zero, this explains everything.